do number one here. So click in your answers to number one. Good. So you guys definitely got number one. What B water is the greatest component of the components that are in plasma. Also, the components. If we take, if we divide blood into two parts, whole blood, we have plasma as one half. What's the name of the other half of what blood is? Formed elements. The formed elements are what part of blood? There's one word you could say to describe the formed elements. Yeah, they are cells. How many different cell types are there to the formed elements? Three. There's red blood cells, also known as what? Erythrocytes. What's the other color? White named what? Leukocytes. And what's the other name? Platelets, also called thrombocytes. So we'll talk about the thrombocytes today. But formed elements is one part. The other part is plasma. So all of these are in plasma. You have water, which is the greatest component of it, which makes 90% of plasma. Then you have these three other substances, fibrinogen, albumin, and globulins. Those three things are what component of plasma? Proteins. Okay, so there's proteins and plasma. What was I trying to get you to see out of this, and some people fell for it about five, is albumins are what? What's, sig what's significant about them? Are they the most or least numerous of the proteins? They're the most numerous of the proteins. So even though they're the most numerous of the proteins, water is way greater. Water is about 90% of plasma. So whatever that greater composition is, let's say it's 5 or 10, it's still not nearly as much as water. So there's albumins, fibrinogen. Fibrinogen, we're going to talk about that at the end today. What's fibrinogen and platelets? What are they all involved in? What process? Clotting, so we'll talk about that. Globulins, there's hemoglobin is one, and antibodies are another example. If there's any questions to this, just ask. Right, let's click in for number two. So I asked you guys this one, so hopefully you have this one now. Good. So erythrocyte. Leukocyte is a what cell? White. Platelet is? Is a thrombocyte right next to it. Number three. So a lot of words that start with H here. So if you guys got these down. Okay, we'll take this. We've got between A and between D. The majority is right, so overwhelmingly, so I won't make you guys go back and forth on it. But if we look at choice D, hemoglobin, hemoglobin is just a protein. It's just a protein inside what cell? The RBC, the erythrocyte. So hemoglobin is just a protein. It's a, it's a globin. It's a glob inside of there. There's about a, a quarter billion, 250 million in each red blood cell of this protein. Hematocrit is the measure of how many like red blood cells are in a certain amount of volume. So if you take one milliliter, you see how many in one milliliter of blood, how many red blood cells are in there? That's hematocrit. Hemoglobinuria, hematuria, that urea means where are we measuring these substances? In the urine. Which one of those means a whole red blood cell in the urine? Well, to make it easier, B or C? Well, we got clickers, so which one of these means a whole red blood cell in the urine? B or C? Click. Those in whole red blood cell in the urine. A whole red blood cell. Uh-oh. All right. Discuss. Come on, give me 30 seconds here. 30, 45 seconds.
Okay, 30 seconds are up. Let's see what you guys got. Still between those two choices. Which one of those is the whole red blood cell? The whole red blood cell between B and C. Okay, we'll go with these 33. Yeah, there we go. So you guys just need to take a second to find it. It was C. So C, hematuria is the whole red blood cell. B, what are we finding in the urine? It's right in there, the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is the what in the red blood cell? It's the protein. The protein that's going to be carrying the gases, mainly oxygen, but also uh, CO2 as well. So again, it's, it's in the name. So when you see them side by side, all right, hemoglobin, okay, that tells you exactly. Heme doesn't really say like red blood cell. It doesn't say erythrourea. It just says hematuria. So you're thinking blood. But how do you know is you just look at the other one next to it. That's telling you it's the hemoglobin. So that's a way you can look at that, I guess, as long as you can find it. Now, number four, click for that. Just make sure you look at your units on number four. Oops, memorize a number. Okay, that was quick. Let's see? Let's see? Good. I was getting a lot of answers in choice D before, but what do you think they were thinking over here? Yeah, it's under 20 days. So you need to make sure you know both of them. So look at the units, all right? Let's do number five. And think in your mind the one answer choice where it is. Don't say it. I'll ask you in a second. The one answer choice that you can pick. Just try to think where in the body that is. Let's see. Okay, where is that? In the lungs. They're the grape sacs in the lungs. So they don't have uh, those macrophages. They do have macrophages in there, actually. Macrophages that will break down other particles, like bacteria that get in there. But they don't have the macrophages that will specifically break down their blood cells. Okay. Number six. If you know your colors, you know what color your P is, you should be able to answer this question. Maybe a little strange. So I guess it's not that easy. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Choice B, Billy Rubin. What color is Billy Verdon? Green. Green. Which one's produced first? Yeah. Billy Verdon. How about a harder question? Where is Billy Verdon coming from? It's a breakdown of what out of the hemoglobin? What specifically? Not the iron. Iron comes out of this substance. The heme. the heme. So heme loses its iron, and then it breaks down into biliveridin and then bilirubin. That's that one big page blowout that you guys picked up last time. So heme breaks down to biliveridin, then bilirubin, and then you just follow that pathway and go into your digestive system, go to your kidneys, and it's excreted from there. Uh, this transferrin, what is it? Transferrin. Iron. You can see the Fe right in that. The other ones are, uh, oh here, globular proteins. That's going to break down into one of the building blocks of proteins. Yeah, break down to amino acids. Okay. Number seven. I'm guessing it's going to be between C and D. So we'll talk about it. You guys are confusing the ending more than the beginning. The ending more than the beginning. I'll give you guys 30 seconds here again.
Okay, let's see how 30 seconds did. Look at your answers. Take what we got. Okay, so it's better. It's C because erythrocyte is the red blood cell, so that's one of the things. But the other thing is this PO. PO is in both of them. PO means, do you remember what PO means? Uh, formation, to make. So, uh, however, the ending after that's a little bit different. There's POETIN and then there's POESIS. The best way I can help you remember that is. Poesis is a process. So hemopoesis is the process of making uh, blood cells. Not just red blood cells, but white blood cells and what's the other type of cell as well too? Platelets. It's a process. We start off at the hemocytoblast and go down to all those cells at the bottom. That's hemopoesis. Erythropoesis would be specifically going down that one side and making the red blood cell. But when you see the different ending there, eaten, poetin, that's a hormone. So you want to make sure, I'm asking for the process or the hormone. So I could have made it harder. I could have put erythropoiesis. I could have put erythropoietin. Which one of those is the hormone? Poietin. Okay, same as that question. So I, I just kind of made it a little bit simpler here. But make sure that ending, poiesis, rhymes with process. So it's a process. Poietin would be the hormone. Okay. See how you guys are doing in blood typing. The number eight. With number 10, I'll be able to really tell if you guys are getting it or not. Because that answer is not in your packet. So we're doing 8 right now. Is there any chart for blood chart for blood type? Maybe. Okay, uh, yeah, if you show it to me after, because maybe oh, well, I have I it Alright, uh, so show me after, because maybe it's another learning technique to help people. But I'm I mean, not do you have a technique? I, I just use the whole party hats. Oh, okay. Thing, but, uh, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you after. Uh, what were you guys answering? You were answering A? Wow, you guys really messed up. All right, <laughs> let's just, we drew this out, right? I thought this, wow. You guys usually always get everything right, other two classes mess up a little bit. This is the first time you guys made a mistake. Okay, just look at number eight, take some time, I'll give you a minute, or maybe two, judging by what just happened. But, we're doing number seven, okay? Oh no, sorry, number eight, number eight. Number eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looks like we're going to have to review it a little bit more. number eight. No way, this is where we're going to start off today. So we're going to review it a little bit more here. So what type of antigen is a person with type A, B, or A? So uh, there we go. Okay. The way you want to think of an antigen, I was trying to, I used the whole party hat thing, but I said if you're going to go and people are going to learn your names, an antigen is a what, basic, is a name tag. So both antigen and antibody both have anti meaning against, but antigen against gen, gen doesn't really make any sense right now, but antibody against a body, the body being the red blood cell, 
Or that's why I use my example of the whole uh, people, like the red blood cells are the people at a party, so it's against that body, so antibody. So uh, again, the antigen is a name tag. So if somebody's named as Adam, right, is going to have a name tag, an antigen that says Adam on it. Somebody's name is Bob, B, they're going to have a name tag B, or Bob, that says it on there. Their name's Adam Bob, or they're, it's a type AB blood, in other words. Again, if it's type AB blood, what antigen are they going to have uh, A and B on there? Okay, let's uh, give number nine a shot. We're still going to continue with blood typing today. So number nine, the person has AB, so they have both antigens. You guys just told me the antibodies. Good. They're going to have none. Because if they had any of the antigens, whether it was anti-A or anti-B or both of them, what's going to happen if they had any of the an antibodies? It's going to clot, agglutinate. And after that, they could break apart. Does anybody remember the word for a red blood cell bursting? Yeah, that's what I always say too. He he hemolysis, yeah, hemolysis, hemolysis. Yeah, hemolysis or hemolyze. Either one. It's the blood breaking. Hemo twice. And now number ten. You guys got me worried about this one. I'll definitely make a video this week, hopefully like the blood flow in the heart. For the blood type. There's the blood flow. I'll make a blood pipe in there. Oh, no, the lecture one, I just left it up in class, just in case I don't get a chance to make it. It's just hard to get a volume on it. Because, like, when I walk that way. Oh, all right. Yeah, I did better than I thought, not to put you down. But I'm just judging by what happened on number eight. So, yeah, it is choice D. Because if a person, it's a tough to get at first, so don't like feel bad if you're not meaning. So a person with type A blood, what antigen are they going to have? They're going to have an A antigen. What would have happen if they had an anti-A antibody in their blood? What's that word for it's going to clump? A glue, glue to me and then possibly hemolyze or hemolysis is going to break up. What happens if this person with type A B blood has anti-B antibody in there? Is there anything wrong with that? If person with type A B type sorry, type A blood has an anti-B antibody? No, why is that not a problem? different type of antigen against a, di and a different type of antibody. Anti-B wants to go against B, but A doesn't, there's no B, it's just A, so it's not going to go against it. Uh, I think we'll uh, start with some drawings here just to show you. Okay. But uh, that, therefore, just quickly to go through this, person with type A blood, okay, can they donate the type AB blood? Yes, they can, because when the A goes over to AB, are there any haters waiting in the person, any antibodies waiting in the person that has AB blood? That's a straw. All right. I don't know what's wrong with you guys today. I don't know if you're tired, if you're not getting it. All right, so turn your clickers off, please, so the batteries don't die. If you're not getting it, let me know. If you're just being tired and lazy, let me know so I save my time, too. Okay. What's that? Yeah, that's what I mean. Antigen and antibodies, what you guys are confusing? Yeah, that is what Okay, because if you guys aren't giving me feedback, i got to guess like what's going on with all your lives today. So antigen and antibody. Okay, let's just take a moment on that one. So the only thing i got to say about that right now is just anti means what? 
Against. What does Jen mean? Okay, beginning. I wasn't looking for an answer. But um, body, okay, against the body. You, body makes more sense than Jen. Jen, you'd have to know some med term. A body, you know what a body is. So against the body. So an antibody has to go against something. Antigen, okay, you say anti-gen, but what's really gen? So the body being, what's the body in this case here? Is it, yeah, it would be the red blood cell. That's why I tried to use this whole example here. Let's just draw it out one more time. So if we have, let's take the example we had, A and AB. Okay, if this doesn't work, tell me, and then maybe later we'll figure something out. Okay. I'm glad, though, that you said something, because you're not the only one. Okay, so if we have blood type A, what antigen is going to be on blood type A? A. Okay. And this, this circle equals the A antigen. And then, do we have a B antigen on type A? No. no. Okay. What antigen are we going to have on AB? A. Yeah, both of them, A and B. Okay? So we have both antigen. So this is the only way I can think of at the moment, the help between antigen and antibody, is I actually make them into bodies here, these guys. So I might as well draw it all out. There we go. So these are bodies. So the antibody is going against the body. It's going against the red blood cell. So uh, in type A blood, what antibody would you have? B, because you don't want to be against it. So you'd have anti-B antibody. See, this is supposed to fit on the B. It's not going to fit on the circle. Would you have any antibodies with AB? No. Okay, so now when you receive blood, what portion of the blood are you receiving? Good. So that's what I'm trying to do with these R's. Receive, receive red blood cells. Because when you separate blood, you're separating it into plasma, and you're separating it, you're separating it into plasma, and you're separating it into formed elements. So the plasma has the antibodies in there. The formed elements are just the cells without the antibodies. So this, this is in the formed elements. I'm just writing Fe. This, the antibodies are in the plasma. So they separate. They separate it when you do what to it? What's that? When you centrifuge it. So that's how you separate that whole blood. So right now, AB is going to receive from A. So is the body going, the red blood cell, or is the hater, the antibody, going to the party? Who? The body goes to the party, right? So the body is going to go over there. Is it going to take the hater with it? No. So when A goes over there, when A gets into this environment now, right, this is A, are there any antibodies to attack it? No. So that, that's okay. So what if we went the other way? Let's say this guy, AB, came over here. Right. Now here's AB. Is there a problem? What's going to attack AB? Yeah. This anti-B is going to go and it's going to attach right onto there and it'll cause a big clump with all the other ones and hemolyze. Okay. I don't, that's the best I got right now. Does that help with the bodies maybe? Just draw stick figures. That's the best I can do too in drawing. Uh, any other things that are confusing you guys that I can help out with? Just gotta let me know. Okay. Uh, what happens is, okay, so they clump together, and when they clump together, that's um, a signal that gets sent out to the big cell eaters, which are, remember, macrophages, and the macrophages come and start eating and breaking them up, causing hemolysis. And there's other things as well too that go and start secreting and breaking them up. So they're not actually swallowing they're not, yeah, they're not really swelled up. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Yeah, they're not really like, it's not like there's just fluid going in. They're... So we can allow you Exactly. Because the body recognizes it's now something foreign, just clumped together. So it's going, like the garbage here now is just going to go and clump and heal it up. If you look at that big page blow up of the macrophage, you'll see the hemolysis picture inside of that, in the top left corner of the macrophage. That's good. All right. Any other questions before we continue with today's stuff here? All right. So let's go to where we're talking about blood typing in the packet. Again, just make sure your clickers are off. 
One thing you might want to do for practice is take all the blood types, like blood type A, and make a chart. And see if you can donate from A to A, A to B, A to AB, A to O. So that way when it comes time for the test, you already determined them all beforehand. So that way it would be easier. So you don't have to keep thinking about it or you can just like double check yourself uh, when you look at it next time. It's just a suggestion. And so you just, again, make a chart with each blood type. Can you donate here? Can you donate here? Why or why not? Can or can't you? So basically, just after the picture of uh, Armstrong right here, he's talking about blood typing. A couple pages in, sounds like you guys are there. So blood types. With blood types, we have antigens. Again, antigens are a type of what for us? So they are. It's what? They're its name tag. So there's three types of name tags or antigens red blood cells can have. Well, there's more, but that we'll look at for blood typing. There's A. There's B. We talked about both of them. For example, if a cell has none of those antigens, neither A or B, what type of blood cell is it? It would be a type O. If it has no name type, then it's just O. It's o alone. That's not funny. So RH, anybody know what RH stands for? One or two people usually know per class. It's a rare one. Right. Well, we'll get to what RH means in like two, three slides. Another way to uh, abbreviate RH is the D antigen. Just to go along with A, B, I don't know why they don't put C, but they just put D as another name for the RH. For example, if somebody has the A, has the B antigens, they're what type of blood? They have A and they have B, then they are AB. And again, if somebody has an A antigen and a B antigen, they're type AB. If somebody has an A antigen, a B antigen, and an RH antigen, you don't call them ABRH. You call them AB positive. You're positive if you have it. Okay, so you call AB positive. If they have the A antigen and they have the B antigen, but they don't have the RH antigen, then they are AB negative. Yes. Yes, so we're going to draw that out as well, too. I'm just intro it. We'll talk about it for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Okay, so we're still going to talk about RH, but I just want to make sure you guys just see that these words are here in writing for you so that you can reference back to them. Hopefully you have the drawing that we did last time. So anyone with type A is going to have A antigen with B, B antigen, etc. This is just a visual way to see it other than the way I drew it for you guys last time. So maybe this is a picture if you wanted to blow up and print that visually puts things in perspective. For example, if I asked you right away and I said somebody has AB blood, I said what antibodies do you, they have? Well, you'd see they have neither. But you'd also have to make sure you understand why they have neither because you don't want to attack yourself. You don't want to attack your own antigens. Agglutinogens, I'm not going to test you on that word. It's not a hard word either way. It's just another word for an antigen. Agglutinogens, just another word for antigen. Agglutinins is another word for antibody. Yeah, I'm not testing you on it, but in case you want it tomorrow. But everybody uses antigen and a body are the words that they use. But again, agglutinogens is another word for antigen. Agglutinins, it's not written up there, uh, is another word for antibody. It's not written, not testing you. Okay, so it's just telling you what they are. Plasma antibodies attack or agglutinate. Agglutinate meaning clump or to clot up. And nothing new here again, just blood types for their antibodies. As you see, it's just repeated three or four slides in a row. Different ways for you guys to see this, to organize it. Choose whatever works for you best. So I'm not really staying so you highlight it. It's being repeated. Okay, so RH factor. Now what RH stands for, it's coming from the name of this monkey. Is anybody's mind? Yeah, it's a rhesus monkey right here. R-H-E-S-U-S. -E Sometimes people ask me rhesus pieces. Uh, I think so. I can't 100% tell you what it is, probably. Yeah, but lots of research I know are being done on this uh, monkey. 
It's the monkey that they first found the Rh factor in. We have it, but they didn't find it in humans first. They found it first when they were researching on these rhesus monkeys. So they called it the rhesus factor. And then they found it also in humans as well too. So they also gave it just one letter as well. They call it the D antigen. So if you have the Rh antigen, like if you have a name tag, the Rh name tag, then you're positive. If you don't, then you're negative. Uh, we're going to talk about this point here on the bottom by going through some drawings. So if you want to get another piece of paper, it should be helpful. Okay. So I'm going to do four blood types here. Not all four, but you'll see. I'm going to do AB positive. A, B, negative, O, positive, and what do you think the fourth one's going to be? O, negative. Okay. I'm going to give you the antigens over here on the side. So you can see that. All right, this, all right, these are antigens. This is the A antigen. There's a circle. The triangle would be the B antigen. And what do you think the box is? What's the third antigen we're talking about here? Rh, also known as the D antigen. So just take a minute and discuss with each other. If you want to draw it in, you can. Or if you want to wait, you can. Which antigens are on these four types? So take a minute and decide what antigens are in each of them. You could draw them in if you want. If you understand antigens, then you should be confident in what you're drawing on there. If not, then you can just think in your mind and draw it. But compare with what you got next to the person, see if you guys are agreeing. The person next to you. Definitely still gonna talk more about it. Definitely gonna get to ask the most questions. <laughs> okay, let's see what you guys got here. We'll do one by one. So we'll do AB positive first, and I'll ask you one by one the antigens. Is there an A antigen on this? Yes. Is there a B? Yes. Is there an RH? Yes. So we have all three of them. Good. Uh, over here, uh, do we have an A? Yes. Do we have a B? Yes. Do we have an RH? Yes. No. Okay, and we're going to repeat it. An O, what antigen, if any, do we have an O positive? Yes. Good. And then what about O negative? No. No. So we have none over there. Any questions at this point before we go to the antibodies? OK, so again, antigens are name tags. It's telling you exactly what it is. Antigen versus antibody, All right, we'll, just, we'll work through that as well too. But antigens are the name tags. OK, so now for antibodies. So I'm just going to try to make sure we divide these so I don't overlap things. I'm just going to write the antibodies instead of drawing them out. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute. Take a minute to decide what antibodies are going to be in each of those. Okay, just take a minute to decide what antibodies are going to be in there. Oh, 
controls are going to have the RH antibody? Which one of those is going to have the anti RH antibody? Which other, which other one? Okay, so let's go through the antibodies now. What antibodies, if any, are going to be an AB positive? None. So there's no, I'm just writing no in here, sorry, it's on the edge of the paper. No, no antibodies. AB negative, what antibodies, if any, are in there? Yeah, there's going to be an anti-RH. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in parentheses, and you'll see why in a moment when we finish this. Okay, O positive, what antibodies, if any, are going to be in there? Okay, so you're going to have anti-A, and you're going to have anti-B, because none of those are on there, so there's nothing to be attacked. O negative, what antibodies, if any, are going to be in there? Uh, all three of them. So you're going to have anti-A, anti-B, and anti-RH. But again, I'm going to put the RH in parentheses. I'm going to see why. Okay, so other than asking me why I put the anti-RH in parentheses, other than that question, are there any questions on the antibodies at this point, how we got those? Okay, so let me go back to PowerPoint slides. And this here is the situation written out, the situation really short. This thing written out here, sorry, I'll just watch it in there. You guys see that one where he makes fun of Trump or whatever? You guys didn't watch the, the roast? He actually roasted himself, which is pretty funny. But um, anyways, number here, six, you gotta correct this down here at the bottom. I don't know why I wrote the wrong thing, but I look back at it later. It's, it's gonna attack, well, I'll explain this, but just correct this down. The baby's RH factor on the, its red blood cells. Rogan, okay, we'll get to that. Just wanna make sure you correct this down. The baby's RH factor, on the red blood cells. Okay, so these are the words to what I'm going to try to show you through this picture here. Okay, so again, the narration is this slide one through six, but I'm going to use it through the diagram. Okay, so here you have a mother, and they have all these dashes because they're trying to say the mother is what? Uh, it's negative. So this is where this dilemma is going to happen. So you get a mother that's RH negative, you get a father that is, what are they trying to show you here? RH positive. So then, what's the baby most likely going to be It's showing? RH positive, just due to genetics, and we'll actually probably have time next week to show you the genetics of how that's happening. But, uh, so the baby is going to end up being positive, just because, uh, if you remember some genetics, the positive is not recessive, it's what? It's done. So the positive is done. Again, we'll do more genetics next time. So most likely, not always, but most likely, the baby is going to be RH positive. Okay. So going back here, the mother is negative, the baby is positive. But actually, stop for a second. Negative and positive, if you look at your sheet, which one of those is going to produce the anti RH? A negative or a positive blood type? If you look, AB negative and O negative, I put in parentheses, anti-RH. Because it doesn't have it. If somebody has the RH antigen, for example, let's go back to blood typing. If somebody has the A antigen, are they going to make an A antibody? Because they're going to attack themselves. If somebody has the RH antigen, are they going to make an RH antibody? No, because they're going to attack themselves. Okay, so now here's why the parentheses thing. If somebody is O negative, they are not born with the antibody against uh, RH. However, if you are, let's say, blood type A, you're born with an antibody against which one? Against B. But with RH, it doesn't work that way. The way to think about RH is like getting a disease or an infection, even though it's not a disease or infection. But for example, let's say you get the flu or you get the cold. You know, let's say you're not, well, either here that will work or Let's say you get, I'll use the big word, streptococcus pyogenase, which is abbreviated what? Strep. You get strep throat. You're going to make what against that bacteria? Your cells are produce antibodies. 
So that's when the antibodies were produced. You weren't born with antibodies against Streptococcus pyogenes. You were exposed to it, or the word here, you were sensitized to it. So you don't develop antibodies against RH until you're sensitized, or again, just want to make sure you're listening. What's another word for sensitized? You were what? Exposed to it, just like a disease. So here's where it happens. Okay. So when the baby is inside the mother, there is a connection between them, not the umbilical cord, but a larger structure. Yeah. The placenta. Okay. At the placenta, there are some things that can go across. There are some things that can't. What are good things that we want to cross between the mother and the baby? Nutrients, oxygen, and the opposite, opposite, CO2, carbon dioxide, one to another way. So we want, want those things to go across. Uh, what, what else here? Uh, what are bad things that can go across? Uh, blood if it, if it ruptures, but I heard another one. Medications, legal medications, right? Alcohol, drugs, okay? Now we're getting specific, ecstasy, whatever, drugs, <laughs> okay? These things can cross and they can go across and damage because why? They're large or they're small. They're small, so they can go across. Large things like red blood cells can't cross or go through. Because if you remember, capillary is the size of one red blood cell. There's holes in the capillary. The red blood cell shouldn't be able to go through. That's why you can have a mom that's A and a baby that's B, because the red blood cells won't cross. They're too large to go across, so they can't make antibodies against it. But small things can. So now we're going to see. So the mother gives birth. So at birth, there's hemorrhaging or there's bleeding. So what happens is the mom's blood is now mixing with the baby's blood, and the mom is now being sensitized or exposed to what? Is being sensitized or exposed to the RH. So what's, gonna, what's her circulatory system going to do? Make anti-RH. So now she has anti-RH in her body. What type of baby is going to be at risk? An RH positive or an RH negative baby? The next pregnancy. If antibodies can't cross the placenta, which they do, then the RH positive will be at risk. Okay, so antibodies, there's different classes, which we'll talk about next week. There's five different classes. There's large ones and there's small ones. Some can cross, some can't cross. For blood typing, the blood type antibodies can't cross. So if a mother is A, yes. Yeah, that's actually what I'm about to show you a picture here. So if you can't handle it, then you yeah. But it's not bloody or anything, so just don't worry. So if the mother here, now she has anti-RH antibodies, and the baby is RH positive, these antibodies can cross, what's the structure we're going to ask you, the connection point? The placenta. It can cross through the placenta and attack that baby. And if it does, it's going to kill the baby. It has a couple of different names. There's uh, hemolytic disease of the new newborn. Heme means what again? blood, and then uh, lytic means what's happening to it, lice means what's the lice, what's happening to the blood cell, yeah, it's bursting, breaking apart, hemolytic deserves a disease of the newborn, or a more, I guess, physiological way of saying that is, I'm typing in here, erythroblastosis, let's break that up, erythro, blood cell, a blast cell is a, what's the type? A beginning cell, osis, like itis, is arthritis, hepatitis, inflammation, and flames, and then fetalis refers to the what? Refers to the fetus. So we're saying the fetal's beginning red blood cell lysis. And if you want to look it up, hemolytic disease of the newborn, arthroblastosis, go to images. This is what happens to the baby, and then it would be a miscarriage. So. Yeah, the baby won't, there's no way the baby will be born alive. So it would, the antibodies will cross right away and then kill it. So that's why it's important now to get this vaccine. What's the name of it? Number six? Yeah, you said it, Alana. Is Rogan. I know there's people in here who've heard of that. So Rogan, what's the importance of Rogan? Well, who's going to have to get this? An RH negative mother or an RH positive mother? 
because an RH positive mother, is she ever going to make antibodies against RH? Because she's going to attack her own blood cells if she does. So RH negative mothers are going to get this. So what happens here is you got the, the RH negative mother. She has an RH positive baby. This happens during the first pregnancy. And during that first pregnancy, she's given this shot of Rogam. Rogam is given, let's see, what's uh, four, four times seven, 28. 28 weeks into the pregnancy, or seven, sorry, seven months into the pregnancy. So usually about two months before the baby's born. Plus within three days of the baby being born after, so twice. Two months before, within three days after. So she gets this injection, and it's an anti-RH antibody. So you're probably thinking, well, isn't that gonna kill the baby or whatnot? Well, she's getting it. She still has the baby, it's still in her, supposedly for another two months. It's, she's getting the injection, but it's not gonna get to the baby. Why is it not gonna get to the baby? I kind of mentioned this idea very briefly. Yeah, the capillaries of the what? Of the placenta. So there's different types of antibodies. There are some that can cross and there are some that can't cross. So we'll talk about that next week. But these are the ones that can't cross. So this anti-RH antibody cannot cross because it's too big. But the ones that the mother, if she made it on her own, those are small. Those can cross. That's a different class. There's five different classes. So again, the whole point of this is to let the mother have antibodies before she can produce on her own. Why, why is that important? Well, I gotta just talk a little bit about immune system for a second. Which one's gonna give you a longer lasting protection your whole lifetime? If you're exposed to the flu naturally or if you get the vaccine for it. Think about chicken pox or anything. More natural. If you get something natural, again, this is next week's lesson. You're gonna have a longer lasting protection. If you get an artificial vaccine, antibodies, they're globulins. Globulins are what organic compound? Lipids, carbs, proteins. Remember at the beginning of our quiz, globulins was one of the what in plasmas? This is the proteins. What are the building blocks of proteins? So your body is just gonna break it down. So when you get that booster shot, that Rogam, it's an antibody, just proteins. Your body's gonna be like, oh, it's proteins, I'm just gonna break it down to amino acids and use it for whatever I need to. So the whole idea is it's in there, but you don't have it forever. She doesn't, the mother doesn't have it forever. It's just in there for a short period of time to kill any of the baby's blood cells that might have entered into the mother's circulation before she has an opportunity to do what? It's like intercepting the mother's immune system. What's the mother's body gonna do if it's exposed to an antigen? It's going to make antibodies. And if it does, those are going to last a lifetime. So it's, the Rogam is going to intercept it. It's going to be there. It's going to attack any of the baby cells that during delivery mixed through there. And that way the mother can't make her own antibodies against it. So next time it shouldn't be a problem if she has another RH positive baby, but she'll still have to get the Rogam again. Oh, sorry. What's that? Uh, yeah, you would have to do it for each consecutive. So it'd be, but which mothers are, not every single mother, what type of mothers? Negative. Well, negative. So you don't need to test the baby. It's just extra costs and stuff. But if it's negative, you just do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, they would, but the, if she did, she would have a miscarriage. She wouldn't, they wouldn't even have time to test it. She would have already had it. So, uh, but that usually doesn't happen. And then there's other uh, vaccines that will go against in case she's making it herself. Like there are vaccines, like you, I think it goes to the baby that would protect it. So there's, there's other types of stuff as well as like backup measurement. Yes. Because that, what's like about time of being be premature is about seven months where it could be born. So they're just preparing the mother so it's in her circulation already. Like you don't want to wait until the bleeding happens because the body right there has an opportunity. So you want to prepare the mother beforehand, her blood system, so it has the antibodies. So as soon as that baby's blood mixes at delivery, 
those baby cells that are coming to the mother are getting attacked right away before it, the body has its own chance to go send cells to like inspect it and make its own antibodies against it. No, it would have if the mother. There would be the problem would be the first pregnancy. The problem would be the second pregnancy because the first pregnancy the blood's not going to mix until the baby's born. The second pregnancy, if they didn't give her the Rogan, that mother has antibodies that can cross the placenta. I know it's a very interesting subject, so if you guys have one more question, I'll just take it on that, because otherwise I have to push through this here. When is it this year? I don't know. I don't know the year. I want to say 1900s, but I'm not 100% sure. Look it up. All right, so this is just showing you another way of kind of visualizing what's going on at the placenta. This is showing you the mother's blood during the first pregnancy. Again, it's highlighting one stage. It's Rh negative. This here is the fetal blood. You can see the Rh antigen. They drew a different shape than we did. They use the triangles on here. So this is at the placenta. So there's no blood cells going back and forth. By then at delivery, there's going to be the blood vessels are going to be bursting in different areas and the blood is going to start mixing. So here we go, a fetal red blood cell enters the maternal circulation and now what's going to happen inside the mother's circulatory system when this enters into it? She's going to do what? Her body. Animals. You're going to make anti-RH because now here comes something foreign, just like a bacteria, just like the flu. Something foreign is coming in so your body is making protection against it. So what Rogam does is it intercepts these guys. Its antibodies waiting here, so it doesn't get a chance to come to the mother. So it would just be antibodies sitting in here waiting to attack them before they get in there. So it's like a first line of defense pretty much. And that's how vaccines work. So if you understand that part, you'll understand when you get to uh, antibodies and vaccines and all that stuff. Yes? If you're what? Yeah. Sorry, repeat that last part. I didn't get what you were saying. Like if. your question yeah Chad's got it it doesn't last forever it's temporary because if I understand it correctly yeah it's temporary if your body makes it it's forever if you get the vaccine it's temporary so you're gonna need it again later on your body will but if you're exposed to it I'll, I'll work through it with you more I just have to keep going through this part right now but you'll, you'll get it you're, you're getting right there at that point all right so yeah this is just showing you here is now the second pregnancy, if you did not, this is if you did not get, what's the name of that vaccine again? Rogan. If you didn't get it, then the mother's antibodies, the anti-RH from the first pregnancy that she got, what's the word for exposed to an antigen? Sensitized. So she got sensitized previously, right here with the hemorrhaging, so she made some. This is without Rogan. So then they would cross the placenta, because these ones are smaller. Rogan is big. Rogan can't cross. So it would stay in the mother's circulation. So then they're cross, and uh, this is just showing you uh, the mother, I guess maybe anti rh which should have been the previous slide up there. But, oh, actually, yeah, I see where it is. It's going backwards. So she made this here, so now that would cause the erythroblastosis fetalis, which would kill the baby. That's why you want to have Rogam, because Rogam won't cross. Rogam will stay here. So in case the baby's blood cells come in here, it will attack you. So, I, I just got to go from this point on because of time. But this is just showing you what happens when antibodies bind. So they agglutinate, that's another word you have to know. And then they clump, and then they lice. They break apart, usually due to other cells in there breaking them apart. Yeah, yeah, sorry. 
Yeah, and we're going to get to that word actually coming up in a few seconds. The same word. The gluinate and coagulate is what Alana was asking. Those are the same. How are we doing? All right, so we'll do like five more minutes to see what we get. Okay, so this is telling you here, and I actually wanted you to figure this out, but here's one of your answers. O negative is the universal donor. So take about hopefully 30 seconds. We'll see what happens. And find out, we drew one of them today. Which one of those is the what? What's the opposite of universal donor? Universal recipient. So don't tell me the answer. I just want you guys to just look at it. Just figure it out. Just take 30 seconds. If you want to talk about it, you can. But just think about it. It's one of the ones we drew today, one of the four. So O negative is the universal donor. Why is it the universal donor, O negative? What's the main reason why? Almost. It doesn't have any antigens. Okay? Because when you when we do transfusions, what are we donating? Are we donating the plasma? Are we donating the red blood cell? Are we donating both? What's red blood cell? Okay, that's the part that everybody tends to lose because they say well, there's all the antibodies in here. So how can all the antibodies go somewhere? Don't take the haters with you to the party. Okay? Just think about that. It's only the red blood cell, only the body that's going to go somewhere. So which one is the universal recipient? You do need to know this. AB positive. What's the main reason AB positive is a universal recipient? Is no antibodies. What's the... Yes, perfect. It has all three antigens, and because it has all three antigens, it can't have haters against any one of those antigens at any one of those hacks. So it has um, no antibodies in there. So in case any blood cell comes into AB positive, there's no haters or antibodies against it to attack it. So again, O negative is universal donor, but AB positive or negative is universal recipient? Positive. AB positive. We'll do this part in lab, uh, the whole blood typing. If you want to look through it on your own, you can. I'll just give you a quick intro. If you don't get it now, it's fine. All I'm just showing you is you would take a blood sample. For example, if you look to the right side, there's A positive. You would put that four times across. You put A positive in all the four wells. Then you're putting antibodies against each one to test. So if it, if it clots with anti-A, then it has the A antigen. It doesn't clot with anti-B, so it doesn't have it, so you know it's blood type A. Then you get over to D. What's another, what's the D antigen? Is the RH, so anti, it does because it's positive. That's why it clumps, or what's the word for clumpy again? Yeah, it's gonna agglutinate. So you just go through down that, but we'll get to that in lab. We'll be using that exact diagram. This is just showing you different, um, I guess distribution of blood types within populations. I'm not going to test you on it. I thought it was interesting. The one that sticks out to me is native South Americans, 100% of them are blood type O. I don't know about that, but it's just inside your textbook if you want to look at it later on. Okay, we have time for this. Yeah, we have time just to intro this. So what's the main idea in one word of what we're going to be talking about when we talk about platelets and hemostasis? Clotting. Okay, so another word for platelets, they are thrombocytes. Hopefully you got that one already. They circulate for 9 to 12 days. Is that longer or shorter than an erythrocyte? Shorter. That's much shorter. How many days is an erythrocyte normally? 20 days. Good. So why is that the, why is that the reason? Well, a red blood cell doesn't last very long in comparison to the majority of cells in our body because what's the main thing that it's lacking during development? The nucleus. It loses its blueprint to life. Plus mitochondria, no, sorry, plus ribosomes, and yeah, mitochondria as well, too. So, but the main thing is the nucleus. But this one's much shorter because what's happening is you'd have to go back to your whole flow chart from the beginning, the hemocytoblast, and all those cells down later. You follow the lineage for the platelet, which I should have put up here, and I apologize, I didn't. But what's happening is it makes a big cell. They call it a megakaryoblast. You don't have to know that word. But they make this big cell. Uh, it's on one of the slides. So anyways, this becomes a huge cell. Think of a huge marshmallow. 
and then all that cell does is just butt off little pieces from it. So all it is is a phospholipid, what do we call it, phospholipid, what layer? Bilayer, which is some cytoplasm and some proteins inside. That's all a platelet is, it's these little pieces of cytoplasm with a phospholipid bilayer. So the marshmallow, I'm saying like you just pull little pieces off of it. So it's not gonna last long, and as you can see, the organ that's gonna break it down here is gonna be your spleen. Here's a question a lot of people don't remember. The spleen, is it on the right or is it on the left side? It's right back here. It's on the left side. Okay, so just let you guys know where the spleen is. And no one's doing surgery on me after that. <laughs> uh, just a few terms here quickly. Thrombocytopenia, thrombocytosis, thrombo referring to platelet, cyto referring to cell. Penia means what? It's the highlighted word there, it's low. Okay, so osteopenia, what's happening? Low bone density. Okay, penia means you're losing, it's going low. Osteopenic, thrombocytopenic, it's low platelet count. Thrombocytosis is going to become a high platelet count. If you have thrombocytopenia or thrombocytosis, so cytosis or penia, which one of those conditions is worse to have if you get a cut? From what you know already, thrombocytopenia, because thrombocytes are involved in clotting, agglutination, or another word we'll get to is coagulation. So three functions of platelets. They're gonna release important clotting chemicals. We're gonna see that, we're not gonna see that today. Uh, it took a little bit more time in other parts that I didn't anticipate. And uh, they're gonna patch, and they're also gonna contract tissue. We got this slide and one more slide. So just to give you an idea of what we're getting into in terms of contracting tissue, Let's say a blood vessel gets cut. Would you think vasoconstriction or vasodilation is going to happen to that <coughs> cut blood vessel? Constriction, what's the whole reason to constrict it? To let less, less blood out, to let less blood come out. So uh, this is going to be the last slide, but don't leave right after because I still got something else to say. Uh, platelet production, here you see Po. What is co again? Forming or making. But is this a hormone or is this a process of making? Process, right? Process, poesis. What would the hormone be that makes it? Yeah, ending, eaten, right? Thrombocytopoietin. There is that cell I mentioned to you, mega meaning big karyocyte. It's a, it's a big cell. You can see it in your whole lineage if you go back to the big cell. And as it goes down, you'll see it on that big flow chart. So next time, we are going to get into uh, hemostasis, and we'll talk about the different steps. If you want to get a head start, you can go to Google. And in Google, uh, you can write McGraw-Hill hemostasis. And it's going to be the first result that pops up. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be step by step of what's going on. So that's pretty much going to finish the packet off. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it next time as well.